So, uh, what are attack paths to compromise the Linux host? It's uh, it's also very similar to what's going on with Windows. It's still password guessing of different services. SSH, for example, is really slow, but still can be password guessed. Uh, SMB comes with Linux sometimes. Uh, different uh, internet services like uh, mail transfer agents or uh, mail catalogs or different web applications are also normally run on uh, uh, Linux and uh, the funny thing here is that uh, there are application accounts created for each of them yeah so for example there are demons that runs within some abstract user account environments like uh, nobody like username nobody and group name no group yeah there are cases like that but normally they just have some users created for them specifically and uh, these users these virtual users uh, own the, their working directories for example if you run a apache tomcat application server right uh, that is normally used to deploy java applications on the server uh, it has Tomcat user in the Linux operating system, yeah, and uh, everything you deploy there is uh, placed into the root catalog, into its document root, uh, with permissions of this user, right? So if you have access to Tomcat and you can compromise its management console, you basically can upload any executable code up there and uh, it will be run with Tomcat permissions. So you will have access to all other applications installed into this Tomcat instance. Okay, so this is like the, this is the limit of uh, your uh, abilities to exploit a specific user account. So you will be having access to everything created or uh, possible to uh, be read by this user account. Okay. What about remote exploitation? It's uh, it's it's also almost the same. Uh, binary code has a different execution format, but still there are code pages, there are data pages, uh, data segments, code segments, and so on. So uh, smashing the stack and uh, exploiting heap. Uh, corruption are on the principal level really similar however the exploits are normally different so uh, if there is a logical flaw in a in input control for the same application that can be compiled and run on both Linux and uh, Windows you most probably will be able to exploit both of them but with slightly different exploits okay so it has uh, differences in uh, particular methods, but the approaches are pretty much the same. Okay, uh, what about local privilege escalations? So, uh, again, there are cron jobs that can be run from a different user. There are uh, sometimes, if they are not still, if they are not uh, fixed yet, uh, that could be possible. There are uh, kernel exploits there are file system driver exploits that can be locally compiled and exploited that's uh, that looks really uh, dramatic on Linux much more dramatic than on Windows because on Windows you 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 meet these cases uh, on almost uh, the monthly basis <laughs> until until recently yeah but in Linux it's uh, it's really a big news all the time if you find the local privilege escalation in Linux kernel it's uh, it makes it makes uh, headlines on the hacking forums at least and uh, it looks like you compile a binary and then you run it and then suddenly you find yourself in uh, the root shell yeah so instead of this dollar sign that is normally uh, meaning that you run the console session as a normal user, you have this uh, pound sign, yeah, this hash sign uh, that uh, represents uh, the root user session. Okay, so uh, root kits are uh, are the things that are 
deployed by malicious hackers in order to first uh, get control over Linux machines uh, and second to hide their presence okay uh, these are slightly more prevalent on Linux yeah so Windows doesn't have this notion of rootkits normally yeah so there are backdoors but rootkits because yeah the etymology shows that uh, it's coming from somewhere where root is <laughs> is um, is a thing yeah and this is Linux most probably so uh, what rootkit contains of so it's uh, most probably a bunch of binary tools yeah that represent that that substitute uh, legitimate tools for example there should be a copy of uh, PS program that uh, normally shows the processes in memory are, that are run right now uh, with different uh, security related information but uh, a decent rootkit would rewrite this um, PS program in order to filter out that portion of output yeah, that uh, discloses the actual presence of the rootkit yeah? Uh, ls program that uh, shows the contents of uh, the directory or uh, shows specifics on a given file also most probably will be rewritten in order to filter the uh, information about the rootkit elements and so on so uh, rootkit will give a remote attacker like the persistence in the system yeah so they will have to come back sometimes and uh, uh, if the configuration of the system changes like the user they have compromised changes their password or something else happens they will have to access the system somehow and uh, this is where the rootkits are used basically yeah and they fix this state of compromise they uh, preserve this level of uh, compromise that attackers have achieved in uh, in the attack okay so this is what rootkits stand for and uh, uh, they are massively used in uh, in Linux and any network worm that uh, relies upon uh, brute forcing some uh, uh, well-known SSH passwords for example yeah, will rely upon rootkits for propagation and uh, arranging persistence in the system. You can, you can meet that. Uh, you can actually artificially create that situation <laughs> if you put uh, a box that you are um, control into the. If you are in control into the internet and you deploy some kind of a honeypot. This is the specific tool that imitates some legitimate services. Uh, normally uh, not very well configured ones yeah like allowing access with uh, some very basic and simple password as a root user uh, you will in a few days I guess that's the maximum that you will last without attention from these network worms you will find yourself a victim of uh, attack attempt and uh, if everything goes well you will just uh, be like uh, virtually compromised by a bot by a worm that is totally automated it will just come to your port uh, TCP 22 it will try out uh, root with the 10 most popular passwords at the moment and uh, maybe it will just get in with the uh, uh, username root and password password yeah and then you will see in this honeypot will register the further actions of this uh, worm yeah and first thing it will do it will deploy this rootkit and then it will uh, just deploy its payload yeah and uh, uh, this payload will be undetectable after the rootkit is successfully deployed yeah if it is and uh, then the payload will start uh, scanning the internet for other machines having port TCP 22 open and uh, will try to probe the uh, passwords they have against those machines so 
that's that's what normally happens in the real world and uh, by installing honeypot you can actually observe uh, what the bad guys do that's a really interesting thing of course if you have a sophisticated attacker that uh, performs manual operations in most cases they will uh, detect the honeypot in the early stages of attack but if it's a an automated network form most probably will you will just uh, <sighs> You will just see how it works, okay? And even if you don't want to run a honeypot, you most probably can see a lot of uh, different login attempts uh, into your SSH server and your access logs in any machine that is running on the internet on Linux. Okay, so uh, what's the actual difference of attacking Linux and Windows? Because until now it was... Uh, more or less uh, the same thing. So uh, remember that uh, just historically, out of its, uh, I guess, cultural uh, specifics, Linux is uh, much more secure than Windows. Not because it contains less uh, vulnerabilities, which I strongly doubt. Uh, the the factual security right the uh the actual lack of known vulnerabilities to attack linux is a result of its relatively low popularity okay so over the years these operating systems uh, like uh, linux or mac os or different flavors of unix were attacked when uh, uh, either a public vulnerability emerged and everyone quickly knew about it or uh, it was the target of uh, a really sophisticated uh, targeted attack, okay? So if an attacker was really dedicated to uh, their success, uh, it, it was possible to hack into Linux as well. But no one really bothered because the monetary value of uh, Linux compromise was relatively low because the monetization of uh, a Windows worm is a real thing and how many Linuxes are out there up to five percent not interesting so uh, the bad guys were mainly focused on Windows and uh, the penetration testers and ethical hackers did that too so uh, that's what the history was now Linux becomes more and more prevalent on uh, in the business world on um, it's installed on many many machines more than uh, previously and the Mac OS becomes uh, very prevalent as well so uh, maybe this uh, state of affairs it, this status quo will somehow shift towards Linux and Mac OS but until then uh, Windows will still be more uh, quote unquote vulnerable okay <laughs> so Unfortunately, that's the fact. Uh, Microsoft somehow deals with that. They are not the leader anymore in number of vulnerabilities disclosed within one year, but still, uh, that's the fate they have to live with. So uh, we will definitely focus more attention on how to compromise Windows, but we have to know how Linux works and how to uh, compromise that as well once we get a hold of a uh, zero day vulnerability yeah Be and before we sell it to some shadow vulnerability broker i'm just kidding <laughs> reported to linux community 